last day of CS 125. So I like this class. Um, what we're going to do today is we're going to talk a little bit about what you guys have done, and then you're going to give us, uh, you guys, a chance to provide some feedback so that we can try to make this course better next time. All right, so let's start off talking about the semester, because this is fun. There are some numbers on here that I think will impress you. So, um, you know, this course at the end of the day is really about the people that are involved. Um, I think, I suspect that all of you, if you think back on everything that's happened since January, there's a staff member or a CA or somebody on the forum that has helped you when you needed it, that has provided some encouragement at a moment where you might have been feeling a little bit frustrated. Um, you know, we have a fantastic staff, you know, all the TAs. Uh, there's, we're a bunch of people this semester working behind the scenes uh, to look at uh, how to make the course better in the future. We'll talk a little bit about that later. Um, obviously, our CAs, fantastic group. You know, again, the, you know, I would encourage you to, I, I think all of you know who that person is. Maybe there's a couple of those people. Um, you know, please take the opportunity this week, today on the forum, tomorrow at the fair, you'll see some of them around, to say thank you. Um, because when I talk to them at the very beginning of the semester, one of the things I point out is that you're going to have an opportunity at some point between now and May to make a difference uh, for somebody who's trying to learn computer science and is getting started in this field. You know, and that's something that, you know, drives them when you see people, we need CAs in office hours, and there's people that are rushing over here uh, from their dorms that might be far away to help out. There's some really committed course staff. The course would not work without them. We'll talk a little bit more about some of those people on Friday, because there's a few people I want to single out this semester. You can probably guess who some of them are. Um, but we have a great group here. Um, and then, you know, in, in many ways, you guys helped each other. Um, you know, there was a lot of uh, forum posts, uh, people answering each other's questions, and this is part of being part of the community of computer scientists and uh, technologists that you guys are now a part of, um, is this sort of thing. You know, you guys will ask questions online, you will have those questions answered, and at some point you're also going to start to answer those questions and build things that people will use and provide support, and this is, you know, again, I, I think this is actually something really special about being a computer scientist. Um, you know, other fields have some level of this, but I think computer science really takes it to uh, a new level in terms of how we reach out and help each other. All right, but let's talk about you guys and look at a little bit of, of what you did this semester. But um, so let's maybe we'll talk about lecture first, right? We have lots of uh, you know statistics to go through. So there were 41 lectures. Um, I played 30. I, I think I was actually 41 songs before class. I have a hard time starting class without having some music on. So um, 1,200 slides. Um, there were 13, and this is not counted today. There were 1,300 total lecture attendances. Um, People also made use of the YouTube videos. There so are about 181,000 minutes of YouTube uh, watch time since the beginning of the semester. I don't know how many of that is you guys or other people outside Illinois. Uh, the online slide decks were viewed you know, about 3.7 million times. Uh, so this is a resource that you guys are using. Um, so this, these are two of my favorite statistics. Um, maybe the person or people in this are going to break that streak today, but I doubt it. Right? So there were four people that never came to class. The entire semester, right? Um, I don't know. Maybe they forgot they were in the class. You know, maybe they're going to some other class somewhere else, and they're like, "This course is really hard." You know, it's all about data structures. It's like, "Oh, you're in 225." Right? Um, anyway, so um, yeah, four people. Uh, there were there. Okay, so that's that's sort of like the ignominious group. Um, number of people who came to every single lecture, including at the beginning of the semester, where you guys weren't sure how the system worked. Two. I don't know who those people are, but maybe you know one of you is out there in the audience, probably. Um, okay, so let's look at what happened online. So we're going to talk a little bit about our community. So you guys made good use of the forum this semester. You uh, posted, you created about 2,500 topics and 7,300 posts. Um, you guys viewed on the forum this semester topics about 115,000 times and read about you know four point about half a million posts. Um, in total, now I want you to remember this number, because I'm going to show you another slide in a minute. So you guys, as a class, spent, and this, I don't know how Discourse calculates this, whatever, but about uh, 2,400 hours on the forum this semester. And you gave each other about 2,500 likes, all right? Let's talk about the staff. So that's students. Okay, keep in mind that number, 2,500 hours on the forum. The staff looked at about 
about almost the same number of uh, topics and posts as you did. They created fewer topics because typically they're responding to things that you guys have questions. They spent more time on the forum than you did, the staff. And I'm pretty sure about half of that is Ben Nordic. Um, you know, it's like 1,300 hours, right? Yeah, Ben's, save, save the applause for Friday. I actually have statistics about how much time Ben has spent on the forum that I will share with you on Friday. It is flabbergasting, right? Like the, the and, and, and I'm really saying this with a lot of love because I couldn't teach this course this way without Ben. I would get so much less sleep. Um, so any, anyway, um, and, and they gave you guys about 10,000 likes, right? And, and I think, you know, again, this is, the, you know, the course staff, one of the most important things, there are students just like you. A lot of you will be core staff members next semester. I hope that you will consider doing that. Um, they don't always have the answers, but what they do always have, I hope, and this is particularly true of people like Ben and um, Daniel and Rima that were active on the forum, is that they are so encouraging, right? I mean, they, you know, I, I look at a lot of the activity on the forum, and there, were, there was almost never a time where I felt like, I don't like the attitude behind that reply, right? Incredibly helpful, very supportive. Okay. So let's talk about the MPs. There were five this semester. That's not including, all these statistics are not including the final project, which you guys are still working on. Um, you guys, we graded 2,300, 23,000, excuse me, commits from 16,000 submissions. Um, you guys ran the local auto grader about 27,000 times. So this is what happens when you push gra uh, grade. And you ran, in total, this is, uh, each test suite is counted separately, about 155,000 test suite runs. Um, and, and this is when you run any sort of test suite. Now here, this is what I like here, right? So keep this in mind in, in a couple of slides when we talk about this. So of to it looks like there were about 1.2 million, 1.3 million test cases that were run. Maybe 60% of them succeeded, but 40% failed, right? So um, for every failed test case, every successful test case, there was a failed test case. And this is something I want you to keep in mind. Learning, growing in this field involves continuing to confront a lot of failure. It's something that I deal with. It's something that's not going to go away. Um, doing this, getting good at it, you will never stop making mistakes. You're gonna keep making mistakes like this. You'll get better at fixing them, and the mistakes you make will be more interesting and more powerful, but this is part of computer science and part of what it means to be a computer scientist. In total, you guys, to complete the MPs, added or modified about what is that, 424,000 lines of code um, to, to across all the MPs and all the projects. And we estimated, and again, this is an estimate based on some of the data we collect from the plugin, that you guys spent about 13,000 hours uh, as a class completing, well, completing maybe some of them, right? Getting, doing as much work as you were able to do on the Android MPs that we gave you this semester. But I, want, I want to stop, and again, I want to go back to this, this, this thing with failure. I, I really like this story, so I decided I felt like it was a good point in the semester to share it, right? One of the things I want you guys to think about as you go forward in this field is that the stories that you tell yourself about how you're good at this or how you learn it have a big impact on you psychologically, and also they have a big impact on how you're going to do in the future. So I really like this story. This story came to me from Hacker News via Jeff Atwood, who's the developer of Discourse and frequently created, uh, previously created Stack Overflow, which he's probably more helpful for. And he found this story in a, in, in a book. Uh, who knows, maybe this is apocryphal, I'm not sure. Um, but essentially, here's, here's the, uh, the, the story. So there was a ceramics class, apparently, and what the teacher told the students is, there are two grading options. One grading option is, I'm gonna give you a grade based on your best quality piece of work. The other grading option is I'm gonna weigh all of the pots that you create the entire semester, and I'm gonna give you a grade based on volume, quantity, okay? So literally, I'm just gonna take everything you produce, ugly, broken, you know, whatever, misshapen, I'm just gonna put it on a scale, and you know, depending on how much volume you've produced, I'm gonna, that's how I'm gonna give you the grade. And so what happened which is not that surprising, hopefully, to you by the time that you've got to the end of this class, is that the highest quality work came out of the group that was being graded on quantity. So the people that were encouraged to keep trying, to build things, to try again, even if it breaks, even if it doesn't look good, just make another one, right? Keep going, keep your feet moving, keep building stuff, keep creating mistakes. 
that was the group that made the most progress. And there's an enormous amount of the design of this class, from my perspective, that is based on this idea. I think that it's possible for you to learn this material. It takes work. And so we set up the class to give you a chance to do that work, right? The quality of, you know, again, final project fair, I'm excited to see what you guys have done, but it sort of doesn't matter, right? This is just the first thing you're gonna build. This isn't an important project. Later, once you set the foundation and you've learned how to build these things, you guys will go off and do important things in the future. I hope so, because we have a lot of problems to solve in the world. We need more people with the skills that you have started to acquire. So, so again, I really like this idea, right? Keep your feet moving, keep doing stuff, right? Keep making mistakes, keep trying new projects. You know, and, and, and this sort of thing doesn't go away. I'm still guilty of this myself. I sit around and I think, well, you know, how should I do this? We're, we're gonna try this new thing next semester. How's it gonna work? And at the end of the day, there comes a moment where you're just like, just stop thinking about it, right? Write some code, it's gonna be wrong, you're gonna fix it, um, but you don't know how it's gonna be wrong until you start trying, right? So, so continuing to do high quantity work going forward is the best way to being able to create high quality things when you need to. So again, in, in, if there's a war between quantity and quality, quantity wins particularly when you're learning something like computer science. So don't forget that when you go on and take other courses, right? This is how you learn this material. You learn it by doing it, and the best thing is to do a little bit every day. Which brings me to the homework problems, right? Because this is one of the biggest quantity drivers in this class, and this is one of the places where I'm the happiest about something that we've changed in the class and the effect it's had. So over the entire semester, you guys have encountered roughly 160 homework problems on Prairie Learn, either it's part of the homework, part of the exams, uh, sometimes in a lab. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, those, to, 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 just so, this is like, look at all the work I did this semester, right? Um, you know, that, uh, testing those required about 8,000 lines of testing code, whatever, it's not, not that big of a deal. Um, you guys spent tot in total 24,000 hours as a class working on these homework problems. And one of the things I really like is that's, there, you know, a quarter of that was working on the ungraded Homework 125 practice problem set. That's how you learn it. People took advantage of that, and some of the people that did the most work on that really got, in my opinion, a lot out of the class and also did well. So you guys generated 588,000 submissions um, to all the different program problems combined. Um, those created about 10 million lines of code, right? So together as a class, you guys wrote 10 million lines of non-commenting code. It's roughly 20,000 lines per student. You know, again, this is, my, this is my equivalent of putting your work this semester on a scale. Um, you know, we don't grade you based on the number of lines of code you wrote, um, but we do encourage you to keep working and to keep writing lines of code because that is how you learn uh, the skill of programming and, and some of the basics of being a computer scientist. So I thought you guys would enjoy this, right? So again, failure is part of life. Failure is part of programming. Um, we, and we know exactly how often you failed at various things, and so I find these are sort of fun. Um, so those 588,000 submissions, we know what happened to every one of them, right? There were almost 100,000 check style errors, right? You know, that, I, I suspect a lot of those were earlier in the semester. We'll have to look at that, right? Um, so, you know, 100,000 of those had some sort of formatting problem um, that you guys fixed, and I think it's really beneficial for you to learn how to write uh, properly formatted code. Um, you guys encountered about 200,000 compilation errors. Um, about 178,000 of those submissions failed during testing. They had some logical flaw. And at the end of the day, that leaves us with only about 93,000 correct submissions. This is despite the fact that many of you, particularly on the homework problems, finish them, right? I mean, you get to, you might take a few tries. I had someone, there was someone on the forum once that, that messaged uh, the help group and they were like, I'm on, you know, attempt number 38 is it okay to ask for help? And we were like, yeah, it's probably okay to ask for help on attempt number four, right? Um, but 38 is definitely fine, right? So people typically tended to get these right, but there's a lot, oh wait, hold on. There, there's a lot of failure on the way to getting this correct, right? And I was also encouraged that some of you took the time and effort to try to actually uh, submit perfect solutions to the problems where we were trying to assess it. So we got about 10,000 perfect submissions. Um, but again, do the math here. So for every correct answer, you guys had to deal with five incorrect answers. Um, and I think that working through that is one of the things that, um, is, the, is one of the skills that I hope you come away with in this class. You can do this stuff. You're going to encounter problems. 
you're going to fix them. That's how computer science works. Don't expect to not encounter problems. Expect to be better at correcting them. So again, you guys did a lot of work this semester. Um, I'm always really happy and proud when I put together these numbers because I see how much time and energy you've put into this. And I, and I know that you've come through it, you've learned a lot, and I hope that you're prepared to go on and do other things. All right, so what next? Let's talk about future. So there are a couple of you, a very, very small number, um, who are going to be able to take 126. It's like a handful, right? Um, Unfortunately, that course is not open to majors, um, and so for many of you, you're gonna have to plan around this, all right? Um, so here's my suggestion about how to do this. 173 is the next course in the progression, but here's the problem. If you go on and take 173, uh, stop bouncing around. If you go on and take 173, and then you plan on taking 225, you're gonna, there will, if you don't program, between now and the time you reach 225, which will be spring 2020, you will have gone nine months without writing a line of code. And then you'll be thrown into a class that uses C++, all right? That does not work, okay? So you have to do something to keep your feet moving, to keep getting those half hour, hour, little bits of practice um, on a daily or very regular basis that you need to continue to build up your skills as a computer scientist in a program. There's a bunch of different ways to do that. Um, if you haven't, one thing I wanna point out that I think is important for you guys to know is that um, if you didn't take 196 this semester, the 125 honors section, you can take it in the fall. You do not have to take it alongside 125. So that's a way to you know, get a little bit of practice um, alongside 173, particularly if you're planning on going and taking 225 and other courses in the department, maybe in a minor or trying to transfer in or whatever. Um, you can be a CA for 125. That doesn't necessarily involve writing a lot of code, but you are gonna be forced to help students with their own code, and there's a certain amount of uh, learning that goes on with that. If you guys are capable of doing side projects, whatever it is, right, you guys have to do something uh, to make sure that you keep learning. Uh, because again, one of the reasons that 126 was put in the program for CS majors is this nine month gap. It doesn't work, right? Um, if you take nine months off and you show up in 225, you're gonna be in trouble, right? We know this, we have data showing. All right, so other things you can do. We are recruiting CAs for uh, fall 2019. That's a fun experience. I hope many of you will consider that. Everybody is eligible. There's no criteria. Um, you know, this is a great learning experience for people. If you struggled in the class, sometimes you are one of the best CAs because you know what the students are going through and it doesn't come naturally to you and so it's easier to help another person. Sometimes someone that just gets things or has had a lot of prior experience is not very sympathetic when they're working with a beginner. Um, so we'll have, I'll put up a, a new form for this at some point. I think the one right now is closed, but at some point over the summer, expect to hear from us and we will uh, be very excited to have any of you here as CAs in the fall. Um, it's a lot of fun. Okay, so let me talk for a few minutes, let me make sure I'm, I'm not running over on time, about the course evaluation. So we're gonna do those now. Okay, great, I'm gonna give you guys about, you know, hopefully about 20 minutes to do them. Okay, so, quickly. We take this feedback extremely seriously, all right? Um, I hope you guys will provide it. Let me tell you a couple of stories about what we've done with this, right? Oh, let me also point out something else. So today you're beginning an email from me. Um, these paper forms take forever to get back to us. So what we want is we'd like faster feedback. So I have an online form that's exactly the same as the paper ISIS form you're about to do. It's fully anonymous. Um, you guys will get a link to that today in an email from me. Um, if I would have really appreciated if you would also do that because that's stuff that we can look at right away while we're waiting for the university to turn through these forms. Um, so again, if, we could, if you could do both, that would be great. If you don't wanna write as much detail on the paper form, I'm okay with that, right? If, if you plan on doing the online form, there you've got a box and you can type into it and you can tell us a lot about what we should do to make the class better. Okay, oh, also, sorry, I just wanna point this out. This is, a t this is a terribly designed form, right? Um, so the, the two, on some level to some people, like we, I will read the whole form, top to bottom, back and front, including the stuff you guys submit online. 
But from the university's perspective, there are two important items here, and they're all the way at the top, and they're squished together. So please complete them. I don't know why they did that, but I've had forms turned in where people have just totally missed these top two items. Um, so please don't do that. Okay, so two stories about how these forms have changed the class. Pretty much every time we've collected and analyzed these, we've made a big change to the class that I think has been really beneficial. So let me talk, talk, talk about two. So the first time I taught this class was last spring. And at the time we were using this online platform called Turing's Craft to do small problems, like the homework problems you're doing today. It didn't work very well, the problems weren't very good, um, it was hard to set deadlines, and I was thinking of scrapping it all together. I said, we don't need this. Um, we did the ISIS forms. I sat down over the summer with a stiff drink at my uh, wife's lake house um, and went through them um, and, and read them, and one of the things that popped out from those forms over and over again was we really like having these homework problems. So in fall 2018, one of the big things we did is we rolled out this entire new set of homework problems that you guys have done this semester. And again, I think those have had a transformative effect on the class and how effective it is, okay? So ISIS story number one. So last semester, again, we did the ISIS forms, passed them out, you know, again, and back in. I, I, you know, because I didn't actually get the paper forms back until like halfway through the semester, I looked a lot at the online feedback as well. And one of the things that jumped out at me that people complained about was the labs. People hated the labs. Didn't like the activities, didn't think it was very useful, wasn't connected to the course. And so again, this semester, you know, we attacked that problem. We essentially ditched all of the old labs that we were using in the past. You can go online, you can look at the old ones, right? They're gone. You guys didn't see them this semester. You saw a few of them later in the class when it's things like the project you know, uh, work on your final project, but in the most case, we rewrote the labs from scratch. Again, this was based on feedback from students. This summer, I've got three extremely talented course developers on staff full time, and we have plans to make changes to the course for fall, and I'm happy to talk about that in a minute if you guys wanna know what we have planned, but if there's a strong signal that comes out of these forms and your feedback, we will do it. If 50% of you say, do this thing, it was really helpful to me, we will drop the other things that we're working on and we will respond to that. Again, the, the, to, to me, the homework and the new labs, I mean, we'll see how the new labs worked, we'll see what you thought of them, we'll see if they improved other things, but these were some of the most positive changes that we've made over the past year, and they occurred as the direct result of student feedback. These were not things I would have thought to do. Again, I thought these small homework problems were like, eh, who cares, right? They're, they're not useful. They turn out to be incredibly useful if they're done properly, right? And so we made a big investment in that last fall. Okay, so do some announcements before I get out of here. Um, as a reminder, the fair is tomorrow at 1 p.m. Um, throughout Siebel. You guys in the morning will get room assignments. They'll also be up online. Um, as your final projects are evaluated in lab, those grades should be appearing in the grading portal. Um, once we have that done, we'll be very, very, very close to having your final grades computed. So if you see something wrong, say something. Uh, because at some point I'm gonna sign letter grades and then it's gonna get very messy to change things. Um, I will have office hours this afternoon as usual. Um, the, the last two things we'll put in are some extra credit for the fair, right? You know, so the grades aren't quite done. I'll probably put in letter grades like early next week, maybe Monday. This is a very fast process, but I wanna give you guys a couple days to make sure everything looks kosher. Okay. Um, so here's, oh, I was excited to put this up. This is our new FAIR page. Um, again, as you guys, uh, as your projects are being evaluated in lab, I'm putting these up. Uh, it looks like we have some very cool projects to look at, so I'm, I'm psyched about that. So the, this page is live. If you want to send it to your friends, I'll try to advertise in the department. We'll post it on Reddit and on the advising piazza and other places. And um, so we're, we're really proud of what you guys have done, um, and this will be a fun thing that we get to do together tomorrow. All right, any last questions? about logistics, about tomorrow, about the future, about the course, suggestions, feedback, yeah. One to three. Nope, everybody pre presents at the fair. Yeah, great question. So you, if you guys wanna sign, if you guys indicated in lab that you participate in the fair, you will participate in the fair. We will assign you a room, you will be there, you will be judged um, by the judges that will be evaluating all the projects, and you will receive, that's how you get extra credit for it. Yeah, absolutely, yep. 
Uh, I'm gonna try. Yeah, yeah, I need to look at how to do it. Yeah, I think, I think discourse in, somewhere in the bowels of discourse exists enough information to allow me to do this. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna take a stab at it. Yeah, I haven't forgotten about that. Somebody tagged me on the forum. Anything else? Last thoughts? Ah, okay, so just, just briefly, because I want to give you guys, so changes we have on tap for fall 2019. Um, probably the biggest one from your perspective as students is that we are going to totally replace all of the existing MPs. Um, and what we're going to replace them with is actually a multi-stage project. So rather than doing, so right now it's like, you guys do an MP for two weeks and then it's like down the memory hole, you never see it again, right? You start something new. What we're gonna do instead um, is Ben is in charge of doing this. So Ben's gonna help me design because Ben is really good at this. Um, he's gonna help me design probably like a 10 week, maybe 12 week um, single project. You guys, the fall 2019 students will build a single fairly sophisticated Android app basically from scratch. So we'll take them through from week zero, the process of setting up the project, and then, you know, essentially what have been the MP deadlines this semester will not be checkpoints while you're expected to complete some feature or have added a UI or whatever, right? So essentially, you know, this, this is our new experiment, right, is to see, um, you know, can we, is this gonna help? Is it more fun for students to be able to build something more sophisticated because the work is all additive? Um, I think this will also give us a chance to kind of teach you how to do a long project. Right? You get to see some of the other pieces that are involved that we usually kind of hide behind the, the cover. Right? But that's the biggest thing that's gonna be a big investment of effort. Right? Mainly because, again, I mean, the MPs take a long time to develop, so um, replacing them all at once is something that every time I think about it for too long starts to seem really insane. But, so I just don't think about it very much, and I assume that Ben's gonna do it all. So, which is true, actually. Um, but yeah, if you guys have ideas, what we might do actually maybe next week over the summer, um, but, but pretty quickly is if you have ideas for an app, right? So again, everybody's gonna be building the same app in stages. I'd like that to be something cool, like something that a freshman would be excited about doing. Maybe it has some social features. Maybe it helps you find your way around campus or whatever. Um, so if you guys have ideas for an app that would be a good fit for this, uh, we'd love to hear them on the forum. Good question. Other than that, we have some logistical changes in terms of how we're gonna, you know, uh, we're, we're, we're creating some tools to make it easier to write the homework problems you guys have been doing so that we can write more of them. Um, we're changing some of the infrastructure surrounding the course to allow us to use some of the resources we have in a more flexible way. Um, but the biggest student-facing change will be the, uh, uh, we're calling it a machine project rather than a machine uh, problem. Yeah. Anything else? Obviously, you guys have the forum if you guys want to ask other things. But, but again, your feedback means a lot to us in terms of um, how we think about doing the, the course. So if there's, like I said, if you guys want something, right, um, and you're, you're not willing to ask me directly or whatever, but if, if you guys, if we see a bunch of you saying individually, this is the thing that would really help me learn in the future, uh, we will take that seriously. On the other hand, you know, I, I just want to make one sort of comment about the ISIS forms. Um, if you fill out the ISIS forms in some sort of like crazy way, um, it's hard for us to take your feedback seriously, right? So every semester, there's, there's a question on the ISIS forms that says, um, let's see here. Where is it? Were assignments and projects returned promptly? And every semester, there's like people that give us a one on that. It's like, how much more prompt do you want, right? Like, I mean, it, it was like 10 seconds was too long to wait, you know? <laughs> So if you put down a one, then it's like hard for me to take the rest of the form. It's like, did you un not understand the scale? Like one is, this. anyway, but like, so I don't know, whatever. I mean, I'm not like saying that we should get all fives for that. I'm just saying like one seems a bit harsh, right? <laughs> Given that the longest you might have had to wait is like one day when one of your assignments got stuck in the auto grader and then we freed it the next day, right? But I think in general, we do pretty good on that, so. All right, so um, I want to thank you guys. I get a real kick out of teaching this class. I love doing it. Um, I feel like this has been a fantastic semester. I've been really proud of all of you and all the work you've put into this. Um, you know, thanks for you know, all of your inputs and hard work. Your commitment to this field um, really means a lot to me. And thanks for making this fun, right? which it always is. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys tomorrow uh, at the fair. And then again on Friday here at 1.30 for wrap up. We actually do have prizes for the fair. 
And then we have a couple of fun awards that we give both to staff and to students at the end of the semester. So good luck with whatever the future holds. Um, Josh and Matt are gonna help me uh, distribute the ISIS forms, and I am going to vanish. Um, but as always, I can't help myself. I'll leave you guys with a little bit more music. Um, 